We hit Cog with Gusto. With Gusto in 54 wins. If you count the season reset as at Platinum 6, we hit it in 54 wins. That's actually crazy. That's insane. So let's let's get right to it, shall we? So this is the deck that we hit Cog with. First of all, hello YouTube. Windows man here, and we've got ourselves a spicy one. A spicy one. We've got uh, <laughs> a personal creation of my own uh, that <laughs> I've been working on for quite a while now, honestly. It stretches way back to when I first started playing Duel Links in the first place. But the I didn't start actually fine-tuning it until July 2020. I believe, where we first hit Cog with it with Level Log, playing like Lava Golems, and then we hit Cog with it in January 2021 uh, with a similar Endless Trap Hell build. It started off as like a Lava Golem Burn Shell, and then we switched to Shadow Game, and then Shadow Game and Lava Golem got nerfed. So then we adjusted it to turn into what you're basically seeing on screen right now, which is Endless Trap Hell, 30 cards. Why are we playing 30 cards? We'll get to the we'll get to that in a moment. So let's just go over the, the the cards here first. We got three copies of the best girl, spiritual beast tamer Winda. Uh, one copy of Palika. We only want one copy of her because she's really bad to open up with, and you really only want her to float into with your other with the eagles. Basically, we made this decision. Uh, this morning, actually, to add one copy of Sphere Karibo and cut out a Wall of Disruption. The reason why I wanted the Sphere Karibo is because it's... There are scenarios where you get to the point where you do have, like, three monsters set up and three traps uh, set in the back row. And that if your opponent just sandbags back row removal and then just hits them all, and then they can eventually and potentially... OTK through you, whereas if you give given enough time, you will probably find the Sphere Karibo and it'll be a safe out to stop from being OTK'd and you just reset up next turn. It also is just a good card to open with. And like we had 16 traps. It was originally 15 traps. This was a Lava Golem slot at one point. And then we just cut a Wallady down to make it the Sphere Karibo. And it actually ended up saving us in an Onomat matchup. So um, bless. This card was really good. Uh, let's get to the Recruiter loop now. We got three copies of Gusto Eagle, three copies of Gusto Goldo, and three copies of Winda, my baby, Priestess of Gusto. And so they all have similar effects. They're slightly different, but they all floating to each other, in which that is if they're destroyed, they special summon another one. So Galdo, when it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a level 2 or lower Gusto monster from your deck, so that can special summon... Eagle or Winda. Uh, Winda, when she's destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent to your graveyard, means you can't do like creature swap or stuff like that, or crash Winda in float. You, they have to be attacking Winda for um, that effect to go off, which is fine, but she's still the best, obviously. <laughs> special summon a t Gusto Tuner monster from your deck, so that will special summon either the Galdo or the Eagle. Now, Eagle, when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one level 4 or lower non tuner Gusto monster from your deck. This one is really important because it's what allows you... When you're in the early stages of the game, you're going to float into Winda because Winda... It's going to start your... Basically, your recruit loop cycle. And it's going to help fill your graveyard with Gusto so you can start capitalizing with a bit of card advantage through future cards you'll see in a moment. But also, the Eagle can special summon Palika and Cam, Serenity of Gusto. And so what you want to do with Palika, when Palika summons, she special summons a Gusto Tuner from your graveyard in defense mode. Its effects are negated, doesn't matter. When they're destroyed, they'll get their floating effects off anyway. And you're locked into wins for the rest of the turn. Um, so what we want end up wanting to do with her, we don't want to open her. That's why we will have like 30 cards and a lot of redundancy with extra floaters. We want to float into her so that we can use her effect to bring back either Eagle or Galdo, which can either act as like another extensive wall of like defense, or it can help turn into Synchro plays. Because when you normal summon Palika, uh, we actually can't go into anything unless we already have a Winda in play. 
because we only have one wind monster in the extra deck, but Lockdown wins when she's summoned. So, but when the turn ends and you summon on your opponent's turn, then you can start synchro summoning for whatever. So, the other um, one of Gusto here is Camp Serenity Gusto. This is how you recuperate card advantage and don't deck out. So, once per turn, you can shuffle two Gusto monsters from your graveyard into the main deck, draw one card. So, very often, in the later game, you're going to want to use, when, especially when you have another Gusto in play, when you have like two Gustos in play, you want to set yourself up in a scenario where your opponent's last attack is going to be uh, Eagle. So that when you float into Eagle, you can float into either like Palika and Cam, and then start your turn and start utilizing the advantage state by having these two in play. Specifically Cam here, because it allows you to shuffle two Gusto monsters back to draw a card. So that's a plus one, just on its own. And then it also shuffles the Gustos back into the deck so that you can use their floating effects later on. This is important because of the overall strategy of the deck. Next up, the fun part. Of course, the fun part. Duh, duh, duh. Yes, this is basically a glorified stall deck. We are playing 15 traps. Triple copies of Fiendish Chain. We want to lock up the board, basically. We want to stop effects from disrupting us. We want to stop important threats that could potentially ruin our strategy. We got two copies of Needle Ceiling to basically reset the board and like it's great for because a lot of decks in the format revolve around setting up with extra deck monsters and cards like Needle Ceiling help clear the extra deck monsters away which makes it hard for them to effectively come back into the game even though we're giving them a lot of time to come back. It's being able to hit critical extra deck monsters is a main thing, but also if you just blow up the board, it sends them so far behind, it generally will give you enough time to build up another wall. Um, and it also works with Galdo, because Galdo's effect is only when it's sent from the field to the graveyard. So it doesn't have to be an opponent's card effect. So you can blow up your own Galdo and still get the flung effect off, as long as you do it on chain link one. You have to be the first part of the chain because what one thing Gustos are notorious for is missing the timing. So, if Gusto uh, Galdo is sent to the graveyard at chain link two or higher, it will miss the timing. If Gusto Galdo is like used as a synchro material, let's say we use Winda and Galdo to make Die Gusto Galdos, it will miss the timing because the last thing to happen isn't Gusto Galdo going to the graveyard; it's this monster being synchro summoned. And like say your opponent goes Treacherous Trap Hole on your Galdo and chain link 2. The last thing to happen to chain is not Galdo going to the graveyard, it's Treacherous Trap, it's Treacherous Trap Hole dissolving, and then what other, I guess what other, other effect that was before it is what it is. If you Treacherous Trap Hole Galdo, it'll go off. But if you Treacherous Trap Hole it on chain link 2 or higher, it will not go off. So then we got three Floodgate Trap Holes. Very, very important card, because locking up the board is important in a lot of matchups. You want to make sure that they stay clogged. And the less attacks that they have overall, the more likely we are to like restabilize. Two copies of Treacherous Trap Hole, yeah, 15 card trap deck. Kind of weird, but we can use it multiple times with Endless Trap Hall, which is our main skill that we're using here. We're going to recycle all of our traps back very often. And just opening Treacherous is great. It's a two for one. It allows you to... Stall for time, basically. The whole the whole point of the deck is like song. It's a control deck. A control deck at its heart. This build, specifically. Uh, this was another uh, addition I added fairly recently, which is one copy of Void Trap Hole. The main reason for Void Trap Hole was a concession to Thunder Dragons, you know, being popular again. I mean, it's, it was always popular, but now people are like really bringing Thunder Dragons. And it's a great out for Levi, the Vioneer. And it also is, just happens to be good against Cyber Dragon, because you can... Having more ways to stop uh, Chimera Tech from popping back row is actually like important, and it also just removes it from the field. Two copies of Wall Disruption, we were at three. We cut it down to two because we wanted... Like, it was, it was, it's been a dead card a lot of the time, especially against matchups like Harpy Ladies. You don't want a card like Wall of D because it just doesn't do enough, especially when Cyber Slash can bounce. Harpy's Hunting Ground rips apart back row. It's a card that's like good when it goes off, but like it's very fragile like it's predictable it's fragile and the only reason why it works well with in like a deck like this is because of the rest of the traps here because like wall day on its own 
very easy to play around. Walla D backed up by like 15 other things you have to interact with and play around, it becomes a lot harder. So, and like Walla D on, on a stay on like on a stabilized board, it can just win the game. I have won several games against Thunder Dragons where they've had to go all in with their Levi's. They make their XYZ play, and then eventually they just have to the force to tribute summon over like a floodgated monster, and then a wall of D is just completely lights out. A 600 attack Leviner is not doing anything, and like a 300 attack M7 is not doing anything, and you just wall out completely. That's part of the reason why Ritual Beast Tamer, Spiritual Beast Tamer Wind does so good in here, is because in the late game, sitting on Winda and like Alti Petalfin is almost impossible to beat over when you've got when you've got like wall disruption and all your traps and your board set up you can navigate the, your way through the game so that alti pedal fin is just a straight up game good game and then last for the main deck we have two copies of blessings for gusto this is another rec uh source of recovery you use it to shuffle you target two gusto monsters in the graveyard plus a third gusto monster in the graveyard shuffle both the first two targets of the deck they special summon the third target. So, the whole point of the deck is to make your opponent deck out. Yes. We are a control deck who, which sole purpose, we're not burning our opponent's death. We're not usually attacking, although it, it can come up. It actually, it comes up in matchups when you can't, like, actually deck them out. But the primary win condition of this deck is to... Make your opponent run out of cards, or they concede out of frustration. Because, I mean, look at this. <laughs> so, we effectively, with, between, with Endless Trap Hell, Blessings for Gusto, and Camp Serenity Gusto, and our floaters just continuously floating into each other over and over again, we effectively go infinite. There is, like, no way for us to deck out. It is realistically impossible to deck out with this deck. And the only thing that would beat you at that point is the turn count to 50. Which happened once. It happened once. We had one turn 50 duel against Valkyries. 30 cards. Don't know why. Don't ask. And yeah, it ended up going to a draw on the last turn, which they were about to deck out. Kind of funny, but <laughs> it is what it is. So yeah, a lot of times you use Blessing for the Gusto. You leverage back your Galdo so they can float more as a defensive mechanism when you have a full graveyard you bring back cam shuffle plus it but you basically just endlessly cycle and then the extra deck we have the standard one ulti paleo one ulti pedal fin ulti pedal fin obviously an mvp card to float into with winda but ulti paleo does come up often you do need to beat certain threats off the table and you can win with damage funny enough uh one copy of a million dragon mech usually made with ulti pedal fin and galdo as another way to like the, the the extra deck is mostly just aggressive tools to actually close up the game like this here is our main win condition the main deck here we don't really need the extra deck outside of like pedal fin to win games because we're stalling we don't need to put threats in the table but there's matchups where you want to end the game and that you can end the game so that's where these five six come in handy Verm being able to pop stuff is important. Bionic comes up quite often. Just the ability to... And it synergizes very well with Cam as well. And that's how you set up a lot of lethal plays. Is being able to flow into Palika on your opponent's turn. After the last attack with Eagle. And bring back a Galdo. Makes for a Bionic. And if you have Cam already. Or summon Cam. You can use Cam's effect to fuel up the Brio. And the Brio can balance a bunch of stuff, and then coincidentally, 2300 attack on Brio, 1700 attack on Cam is exact lethal. Trigger people with one Karibo, exactly. Exactly. And then we have one Samurai Destroyer, Scissor the Seven. We need, I felt like I needed one generic Seven. I tried Black Rose, never went into it. I felt like it wasn't doing anything. And Samurai Destroyer was just one that I felt like I was summoning the most out of all the sevens that we could be running. So we have that. We can go into it with Cam, Galdo. We can go into it with Winda, Galdo, uh, one of the RB fusions, and Eagle. That's generally how you make Samurai Destroyer. And then one copy of Digusto Galdos, which is also another recovery tool in itself, but mostly it's an aggressive ankle of attack. 
one tuner, one uh, more non-tuner gusto monsters. So usually it's Galdo and Winda. Very flavorful. Except for the fact that you can't make it with Winda and Eagle. Kind of a flavor fail. But once per turn, you can shuffle two gusto monsters from your graveyard to the main deck to target one face-up monster opponent controls to destroy that target. So again, shuffle more gustos back, pop more things. Um, yeah, it's just a suit. It's not really a generic rank five. Uh, I think I, I completely missed Catastor, by the way. Catastor is a generic rank five, and I wanted another. I had some sorrow in the spot, and it was like okay. Um, but I wanted another, like, because the extra deck mostly is for being aggressive. I wanted something that was aggressive, generic, and could also be used as a defensive tool. And Catastor is that, because it can only... It's at the start of the damage step, it discard battles a non-dark monster, destroy that monster. So, anything that's non-dark, it just brick walls. For m most of the time. And it come, it came up. We actually got to kill the 7,000 attack Tyrant Infinity with it. It was kind of, it was kind of nice. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the main deck. That's the extra deck. Endless Trap Hell is a skill. Uh, very fun deck. Very uh, rewarding if you can get it down right. You need to have a lot of patience. A lot of patience with, to play a deck like this because your games are not fast. Your games are likely on average going to be about 25 turns long, if not more, because you're literally trying to make your opponent deck out. So if you're not into stalling and uh, if you're a very go, go, go kind of player, then I probably wouldn't recommend this specific build. But this is the build that I have found to be the most successful, the most um, that I've had the most wins with, the most fun I've had with it, and it just seems to flow extremely well. So that's the Endless Trap Hell Gusto list, 30 cards. Uh, King of Games in 54 wins. Very, very nice. And I probably won't show them here, but I will uh, I will show off some replays of the deck in action at the end of the video, because we are uploading this to YouTube. So uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, for all the good people in my stream, uh, I love you all. That was awesome. Glad you guys could be here for... This very, very smooth King of Games climb. This was very awesome. And yeah, there will be replays at the end of the video. And I'll have that all ready to go. And thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.
Manuel.